There would be times when you would be working on an enterprise level automation. And during this time, you might even have to collaborate with other developers on your code. Not just that, you might even have to maintain different versions of your automation. In such a situation, you would always need a version control system. In this video, we're going to talk about Git, which is one of the most popular version control system, and see how to use it in UiPath. So without any further ado, let's move on to the agenda. In this video, we would cover this lecture in two sections. In the first section, we'll try and understand what is Git and why do we even need it. And in the second section, we'll start with a demo on to see how to use Git with UiPath Studio projects. Under this, we'll first create an account and add a project on one of the Git repository hosting services online. And then connect this online project, also known as the remote repository, to our local Studio project. Then we'll explore some of the functionality of the Git in UiPath Studio. We'll see how to clone and copy your pre-existing online repository. But without wasting any further time, let's go ahead and see what's Git and why do we need it. Well, Git is one of the most popular and the best version control systems available in the market. And like any other version control system, it helps you manage your project files. In context of UiPath, when I say project files, these files are nothing but your XAML files or your JSON files or any other file associated with your UiPath project. The Git helps you nothing but to keep track of these project files. The previous statement where I said Git is one of the best version control system are nothing but a bunch of words, which does not hold good until and unless we don't understand what is it that Git offers us, which is so different from any other version control system. So let's have a look why we need Git. Well, basically there are three features that make Git so popular. Let's have a look at each of these features one by one. The very first is that it helps you keep track of the project file changes. Let's imagine a situation where you have deployed an automation at your customer's workstation. It has been working fine for the last one year. A core developer of yours plans to make some changes to this development. He makes these changes and then goes on a holiday for the next one month. During this time, this automation starts to figure out some errors and bugs. And in order to rectify it, you don't know where to start because you don't know what the changes your colleague had made. The Git here helps you by offering a solution wherein you can just go and look at the history of all the changes that have been made to the project. You could see all the commit messages and also the person and the date when the changes had been made. All you need to do is click on the change and select the file where you want to see the changes have been made. Now let's move on to the next feature that is stress-free collaboration with team. To explain this, let's take an example wherein you are working on an automation which generates reports. There are basically three sequences. The first is a login sequence. And if the login is successful, then you generate a report. And if not, you send an error message. Since you don't have enough time, you ask your friend to generate a send error message automation. And in order to do that, you send this file via mail to your friend. Now your friend is working on this automation and he's automating the send error message sequence. In the meantime, you found some time and you started rectifying some errors in the generate report sequence. Also during this time, your friend found some bugs in the login sequence and that's why he started to rectify that as well. Now that your friend is done with the automation, he sends this file back to you. But since now you're working also on this file and you have made some changes in the generate report sequence, you will have to manually copy the send error message to your workflow. And at the same time, since you don't know that your friend was working on the login sequence as well, you would miss out this file forever if you don't know that the changes had been made. Making long story short, all these problems can be avoided if we use Git. So let's move on to the next feature, which is nothing but ease of creating feature branches. Now let's say that the automation that you are working on has been deployed to your customer and is running successfully for the past one month. 
Now your customer decides to add few modification to this automation. And in order to do that, you need to make changes to your generate report and your send error message sequence. You divide these two sequences among you and your friend. And you realize that it will take two weeks for you and your friend would take four weeks to complete this sequence. If you notice both sequences, the generate report and the send error message sequence, they are both mutually exclusive to each other. That means that working of one sequence is not dependent on the working of the other. Now, even if you are able to complete your part of the project in two weeks, you would not be able to deliver this project to your customer for testing because your friend still needs another two weeks to complete his part of the project. Well, Git offers you a solution wherein you can create multiple versions of your project by creating different branches. And every developer can work on his or her feature branch separately. At this point, I hope you understand the importance of Git and why we need it. So let's move on to the next section of this lecture where we'll see how to use Git in UiPath. For that, we need to first create an account in a Git repository hosting services. There are multiple hosting services available online. And of them all, GitHub is one of the most popular one. In our video, we'll be using GitLab to create our account and add new projects. So let's just go ahead and create an account on GitLab. Just fill in all the required details and hit on register to create your GitLab account. Once you have created an account, you would land up on this page. As you can see here, there's an option to create a project. Just click on this. And here you just need to give a name to your project. Let's call it UiPath Bootcamp. And once you give a name, all you need to do is select the visibility level. It could be either private if you don't want to share your project or public if you want others to also have access to this project without any authentication. In my case, I would use public and then hit on create project. After creating a project in GitLab, we need to connect this instance to a local UiPath Studio project. For that, you need to click on clone and copy the HTTP code. Once the URL has been copied, let's go to a local project. And here you would see that there's an option which says add to source control. As you click on this, you have two options. The one is copy to Git. This is to be used when you already have a Git repository or else you can initialize a new Git repository by clicking on Git in it. Let's initialize a new project and select the folder where you want to initialize this project. I'm already in my UiPath Bootcamp folder, so I'll select this. And as you can see, a commit changes window pops up. This window has all the changes that have been made to this project. All you need to do is select all, write a message, and I will write initial commit and click on commit and push. The next step here, he's asking you to put in the name to your repository. So we'll call it same as UiPath Bootcamp. And now here is where you need to copy the URL that you copied from GitLab and then save. Here you need to put the username and the password that you used to log into GitLab. I'll give in the password and the login ID that I have. And at this point, your local repository is connected with the online GitLab repository. So if we go back to GitLab and refresh it, you should be able to see all the files have been added to your online project. At this point, Let's add few more changes to your project and commit it to the online Git repository. So I would just create a new sequence and give it a name of 
feature one. I'll add in an activity right line and hit on save. Once it's been saved, now you can see that in the Git panel, there is a one change that has been recorded. Now in order to push this, just go here on the project side. All you need to do is right click here, click on commit, write a message, let's say feature one, add it and then click on commit and push we could go back to our online repository and refresh to check the new changes as you can see here the feature one added message is displayed and 15 seconds ago a new XAML file has been added to your repository. Another feature that we already discussed was about to check the history of all the changes that has been made. As you can see, all the changes have been recorded here and also you can see the files that have been changed. Now let's imagine a situation wherein your friend wants to collaborate with you on an automation project and he has already created a remote repository on GitLab. Now, all you need to do is copy or clone this repository on your local system. In order to do that, just go to clone and click on clone repository here. Select the URL that your friend shared with you. And then on your local system, select the directory where you want to copy this project. I'll just create a new folder and call it friend repo. I'll select this folder and click on open. Once you do that, the remote repository from GitLab would be copied to your local workstation. Now, in order to see where this repository has been copied, just go to your project panel and go to open project folder and if you can see inside your friend repo all the files from your GitLab has been copied here. Well that's all for this video. I hope now you would be able to better manage your projects. If you like this video click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any videos in the future. Well thank you for now and see you again soon.